I'm Eric. And I'm Steve. 1v1 bannings and post-rotation pickups. Let's talk about it. Welcome Planeswalkers. Uh, we're here going to talk about uh, the 1v1 banning update that happened a little bit ago, early October 2017. They got me again, guys. Yeah. They and, got uh, me again. Yep. <laughs> They did, and then, uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out our Geist of Street Trap video, go check that out. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Steve got the hammer laid down on him that time as well. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about things leaving standard from the... Sh um, from the BFC. Shadows, BFC, and basically then, our highlights of yeah. what you should pick up now, because it'll yeah. probably be the cheapest that it'll ever be. Or at least keep an eye on it, because it may fall a little bit more. It's only like a week or you know, yeah. a little over a week. Or no, tomorrow will be a week. Yeah, there's definitely some goodies to pick up, though. Yeah. So first, let's talk about the uh, the um, 1v1 bannings. There are only yes. five cards that change. Yes. First, here is Edgar Markov. And it, playing. I played him in the 2017 Commander Challenge. Um, it, the, he is banned in 1v1 as a commander only. So let's read his why. Yeah, so the eminence ability is why. Um, it's yeah. like it's a lot like Aloro um, yeah. and Derive, for that exam, or for that matter. It's these commanders that do something outside of being, being in play, in play yeah. that I think, you know, the 1v1 committee is kind of like, no. So anyway, his eminence ability is whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 black vampire creature token. Yeah. Plus he has first strike haste, and whenever he swings, he gives plus one, plus one counters to all your vampires. So there's a lot there. Um, we got to see it firsthand, actually, in our 1v1 playoffs, why it was so, you know, good and it really got banned like appropriately quickly yeah. in my opinion so yeah you think of and that's the minute i heard about this i thought okay why and then you, exactly what you said aloro popped into my mind yeah. it's just like okay you play a one drop vampire and all of a sudden you have two bodies at least at one one like that's really really good and it just gets worse and worse and yeah i'm curious if any of the other eminence ones will get banned like i i don't know i mean the cat, maybe, because he does have a pretty powerful ability. The problem is it's limited to cats. That's the thing. So yeah. maybe... Talking to Robbo. Yeah. Or the world. Yeah. Maybe it's just because vampires are so prevalent. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah. I don't really... I mean, maybe a Grixis Wizards deck could run away with it. You know, just making a bunch of tokens. But I don't know. We'll see. That'll, uh, you know, come up yeah, later, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I'd say, yeah. He, yeah. I think the, the one that puts him over the top is just the fact that Turn one, you could get an extra vampire. Turn two, you might have an extra vampire, but turn three, you might get two extra vampires. Well, I mean, just think about, like, the... You go from the Aetherling vampire, the two costs of Vampire Nighthawk, into the Vampire Nighthawk, mm -hmm. and that has already netted you two amazing creatures plus two tokens. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, you'll see the, the theme from here on is... Yeah. Uh, pretty straightforward if I can get our slideshow to work. There we go. Yeah, so Eidolon, a great rebel. Um... I definitely agree with this. It, I read an article about it, and it definitely spelled it out for me pretty pretty plainly, I guess. Um, essentially, they were finding that most of the decks that play this card and end up playing this card, actually, are just it's almost like a shoe and win at that point, because mm -hmm. your opponent is going to be playing low-curve stuff, as are you, yeah. but you know, you're know you prepared for it. They're not. Yeah, if you're ahead by one point, yeah. it's going to kill them first. Like, yeah. And um, just a little bit of background. I haven't played much Legacy, but I played a Legacy Burn deck, and th pretty much all of these cards are part of that yeah. package. <laughs> um, and now that like Commander 1v1 Commander's down at 20 life, it makes perfect sense yeah. that this is kind of where they're going, um, and especially one later. But yeah, if, yeah. if you're, like you said... You think of how many people have tune decks. Like y the reason you got hit is you have a Kari Zev, right? yeah. which is all about just like trying to kill your opponent as fast as you can, throwing in a burn here or there. Um, this obviously is just going to punish everybody. Yeah. And in one v one, who's playing like four drops? Like if you're, I mean, unless you're commander or something, like you know, you might top out at five in one v one. Yeah. Unless you have a really good spell that will win you the game. I was actually kind of happy. I, I omitted this one just because Kari Zev's on two, and this card's on two, and mm -hmm. I didn't really want to compete with Kari Zev very yeah. much. And For me, this type of effect has never been what I'm aiming to do. I understand why it's good, and yeah. I haven't played you know against it. Sure. And it's really good, but this was not one of the ones that I was sad about. It's the other two that are coming up. That yeah. 
So we'll move on. Again, more burn stuff. Yeah, this one right yeah. here. Uh, uh, uh. And the minute you told uh, you sent me a text about this, because I knew Edgar got banned, but I knew I imagine there was some other stuff. Yeah. Of course, Fire Blast is part of that legacy burn package, and <laughs> it pretty much says, uh, you're about to win the game, so ditch some lands, deal four. Yeah, Hit really. somebody for 20% it of your life. It was so good. Like, yeah. it was so good. I mean, I've I have gotten myself out of so many tight situations with Fire Blast. It's yeah. not even funny. Like, mm -hmm. just like what do you need more mountains for at a certain point i mean yeah. really and they spelled that out once again in their you know reasonings it's just like yeah that that makes a lot of sense i'm sad to see it go but yeah so it, now it's going in my cube i wonder <laughs> if, if life totals life total stayed at 30 if that would have kept this in yeah probably i mean i, I think there would be a lot less mono red yeah. and red green red white decks running around at this yeah. point because really they are becoming a menace and We've seen it in our 1v1 finals. I mean, we've got my Karzev deck, David's, you know, Goblin deck, and there's, like, a ton of other just red decks. Sawyer was running... Who was his commander? Uh, he first had Vile Smasher, but, of course, he got banned. Yeah. And then I think he switched to... Um, uh, I can't remember. I'd have to ask him. But hmm. another black-red commander, and then he went to mono-red, and then he went to red-green. So, I mean, he went all, all through over the, the cycle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Through Junt, so... yeah. Uh, let's check out our next one here. Oh, no, no, this one course. hurts even more. <laughs> yeah. Like, I won so many games off the back of this card, because people, you know, when you're playing against, like, four-color 1v1 decks, people are so greedy. Even even tri-color. And I think if you step into the realm of 1v1, yeah. people are just like, the, the, the bar is set at Shocklands, yep. if not higher. Yep. <laughs> like I'm playing Legacy, 100-card yeah. Legacy. And in Price of Progress, you know... I killed so many level players with this card. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, you've got, like, five... Uh, non basics. Yeah, okay, blah! <laughs> it's nuts, man. Like, and I'm, you know, copying it, like, that was the, my favorite thing to do, just destroy them, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I, I was joking with somebody about uh, that new Destruction Land in... Um, Ixalan. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, destroy non basic or whatever. Yeah. Like, uh, another thing in the legacy experience, like, you'll see people blow up their own non basics just oh, to yeah. save themselves two damage or four damage if yep. they have a wasteland or something. Like, in, in a 1v1 commander situation, especially for two, what, why not? You yeah. know? Ah, so good. I think maybe our last one here. Yeah, this is another card cortex. that I didn't necessarily play with, but I definitely understand it. It shuts down life gain decks, like, right away. Yeah. There are a lot of cards that do that. Mm -hmm. And. This one, I don't know. It, I this out of all the cards that are on this list, this is the one that's kind of like, oh, okay. I, I mean, I, I never even thought about playing it, but okay. It's to me, it's a little too. It's too similar to the um, Eidolon. Yes, the Eidolon. As far as even if you're casting one spell that's three or less, you're going to take two. This yeah. one just says take two. Everybody, again, if you're ahead in the race, which you probably are. You're gonna catch your catch your opponent first, and then of course, like there's no way to pull up with this yeah. on the, in play. That's, that's the thing true. that I think puts it over the top. I mean, it shuts down like Batter School, Worm Coil Engine, any of those, you know, even some of like the Black White Sword and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely GTA. a good one. <laughs> um, I'd say good, good uh, bannings, especially if yeah. since like you said, there's kind of a mono red menace going on. Yeah, and really, I think people they. These cards will make an impact, but I don't really think it that much. Yeah. Like, all I did was switch, like, to, like, another burn spell and, like, another creature, and that's all I had to do, so. Yeah. And I think I think Eidolon is probably the most expensive. I thought he was kind of pricey, like, 10 yeah. bucks plus. Um, you know, Price got a reprint, so. Well, I know he's played Modern and Legacy, so. Yeah. Mostly Modern. I don't know how much Legacy, but mostly Modern. Yeah, so hopefully it won't hurt, hurt you too bad unless you bought the Edgar deck to <laughs> make it into 1v1. That, that I know Greg did spell. that, so. Oh, did? oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Does he know about the ban? I haven't told him yet, but okay. his, I'm, I'm waiting for those salty tears. We'll, we'll try and uh, <laughs> capture that moment before you yeah. go. So. But that's it as far as the October 2017 uh, 1v1 ban list. So next we're going to talk a little bit about the rotating standard cards that you may want to pick up. And these are just our picks. Yeah, there's a ton of them. I mean, really, as we know, EDH is so wide and vast as yeah. far as what you could be playing. So we didn't want to spend, you know, two hours talking about every card that we like. And we yeah. just kind of picked the, the highlights, in our opinion. Yeah. Especially, like, well, Green Warden. Yeah. Like, this is a Eternal Witness on a bigger body that... Mm -hmm you can essentially do twice because yeah. i mean i've definitely had him die and exile them just to get something back and it, it's worth it it's similar to that dreadwood tree folk with yeah. the um vanish not vanish 
Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Vanishing, I think Vanishing, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, not bad. I don't think it's too much. No. But in a mythic, it's useful. Yeah. It's Everybody loves green. I mean, if you think about like... it, maybe it was a dollar before. Maybe it's like 50 cents now. So, I mean, yeah. if you want to pick up a few of these for a few of your decks or whatever. and I always try... My thing is, is whenever a rotation like this happens, I just pick up, like, lands little cards like this and the really big cards of course and then just kind of throw them in a binder yeah that way you have them for when you want to build in the future yeah i can see that and this guy he's just good like you said an eternal witness with some different stats uh and this guy yeah he unfortunately has not gone down a whole lot i mean i think he's still like ten dollars or something like that he is seeing play in in multiple formats i do really believe this will be the lowest that he ever gets um you know ten dollars is not bad for a card like this no you know, give it five years, this will be like a $40 card like the rest of them. You yeah, know. I can see it. Did I say 10 years? <laughs> you said five. Okay, good. I ten, was like, $10 card now, roughly. Yeah, I was like, that's a lot of years. Okay, yeah. maybe not that many, but yes. Uh, I do I do see him on the same level as the, the first three Titans. Oh, yeah. like, well, his, his cast ability is absolutely ridiculous. It yeah. will, it'll solve problems for you that no one else will, essentially. Yeah. And then, of course, just mill 20 every time he attacks. Like, that's it's yeah. pretty good as well. Plus, he's not a bad commander. You know, if you want to go colorless, he's not a bad choice. Mm-hmm. He's not the best, in my opinion, but he's not a bad choice. You have a bias towards colorless. Yeah, though, I do. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Void Winnower. Here's another one. The, any card, I'm a huge fan of any card that says, change the rules in your favor, here's how. And this is definitely one of them, where you just say outright, just ban it, or not ban it, can't play it, you know, yeah. counter it. Well, that my sort of thing. my main thing with this and maybe even Ulamog is when is this card going to get reprinted? Yeah, the, uh, specialty product at best. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could say that about every Eldrazi that is essentially in both of these sets. We could have even brought up the wastes. I yeah. Mean, yeah, they'll probably show up somewhere else. I mean, who knows? We might go to another desert set where there's actual wastes. Waste, and, yeah. well, there were wastes this time, but mainly wastes or something. Anyway, um, Void Winner is one of those. Um, what's the... We forgot to bring up the four cost dude. The other Eldrazi. Eh, anyway, Reality Smasher. There's a ton of. Oh, those are in the next set. That's why. Huh. Yeah, we're go- going set by set. Are you thinking Thought Not? Yes, Thought okay. Not's here. I know we didn't include him on our list, so that's a good bring up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's no big deal, but yeah. I think you're right. The only way we'd see this is if we like get a limited product or they come out with like from the vault Eldrazi. Oh no. God! I hope not. I hope not too. We've had too much Eldrazi. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh God! Now this archive. this card is probably one of my favorite rocks to be produced yeah. in the last couple of years. It is, yeah, yeah. You guys have heard me talk about it in pretty much every deck deck that I've made. Yep. It's just like a mini or a double mind stone yeah. essentially. I mean, I think it's perfectly costed. Yeah. I think the little one is great you know it's awesome i think this one is just enough payoff for me to think it's ridiculous and then the big one is like oh i'll, I'll turn it into three cards if i really need to yeah so this is like perfect in the middle i know I, like i lucked into a, a foil copy of this i don't know what it's at but i will keep it yeah and the the uncommon just non-foil has been on our buy list for probably the last six months and yep. we haven't gotten like more than a handful It'll, it'll be one holding that, them. Yeah, people are always looking for. EDH players will always want this. If you're playing anything remotely, you know, artifacts, you'll want this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Super good. Oh. And I think this may be our last one from BFZ, but Gideon, yeah. we kind of threw him on the list because he was kind of the big money card for a while. Yeah, I mean, his minus four is great. It's good for token decks. It, his zero ability is great. You know, his first ability is great. There's nothing wrong with this card. No. It's maybe not the biggest, best Planeswalker for the Commander format, but it's definitely great Mm -hmm. as far as, like, just utilizing its abilities, so... Yeah. As any Planeswalker is, I guess. (laughs) One one term that I hear often as far as cards is, like, price memory. Have you heard of that? Yeah. I I could see it applying to this card. Yeah. You know, just being, I think, $30 at some point. Well, I don't... Is it even played in any other formats? Like, that you know of? I think it was in Modern for a second, but it didn't last. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. Beats me, especially with the new Gideon rules and yeah. the one Gideon. Like Gideons are kind of a safer bet now. Yeah. They're oh. almost a tribe. Now this card. Yeah. This is another one of those that I would definitely pick up. Yeah. There's no question about it. No. It is a house and commander. I mean, mm-hmm. either as your commander or just in any type of deck that's running black. Like I love it in mono black decks. 
I need like three copies of this car. <laughs> it's so good. It's a vampire, which yep. you know maybe doesn't look like it, but if you're familiar with Zendikar, of course, it's got vampires and yeah, plus one, one of the drawings token. Yeah. Oh, so there, so there's good. a lot of like homes for this card to find. Yeah. I'd say. Well, and I love effects that essentially sh shut your opponent down from doing something mm -hmm. that they're trying to do, mm -hmm. and it's just so good. Yeah, yeah. denying them some uh, some graveyard access yeah, is so. always responsible. You'll hear me say in our, some of our games, and I always not chastise people, but I give them a hard time. <laughs> if they don't, if they don't remove somebody's graveyard, like you say, hey, you should get a bajuka box, you yeah, know, really. that sort of thing. But yeah, Kalita is super, super good. Yes, Chandra. Yeah. This is my personal favorite Planeswalker that came mm -hmm. out of that whole block, even though he's or she's maybe not the best one of them, but she to me is absolutely ridiculous she does everything you want her to do she makes you know guys that can swing she draws you a bunch of cards she essentially is a miniature board wipe there's everything but uh, you know upside with this card so mm -hmm. or everything and upside so there we go mm -hmm. that's a better way to put that what what is your favorite ability uh probably the zero ability yeah. which deck do you include that in Steve? uh pretty much any well definitely Duretti yeah. and uh yeah pretty much any of my you decks. just like that loot Look, yeah. like so so many people i think approach magic and and there's nothing wrong with this because i understand like they'll see something that says D discard my hand like yeah that's not good and then you say yeah yeah it is like just think think about it you could get i mean sure it could backfire but it's like it's information at there's, the very least yeah. you know there's so many good situations of this i mean going to dread obviously you're going to want to pitch like your biggest ar artifacts or whatever but i mean even outside of that if you i have this in a red black Rakdos reanimator deck and it's a ridiculous powerhouse mm -hmm. and the fact that it gives you that many cards plus one is just ugh, so Super good, good. Yeah. so good um next now we got nissa yep. voice in a card not a bad card at all it's uh probably the lowest costed because it got printed well besides off nix list but it got printed in the dual decks and i know that hit it pretty hard <laughs> mm -hmm. i know this is one of kylie's favorite from planeswalkers from this block he loves this card um, I'm okay with it. I really like the minus two, of course. Yeah. It's really good. And then the my, our plus one's not bad at all. Mm -mm. And obviously minus seven is amazing, but yeah. when are you actually going to get to that? Yeah, probably not often. I definitely would see the mi the second ability, the minus two, just, and they're not until end of turn, like some of the white planeswalkers yep. that are around. That's just super strong. And yeah, yeah for three costs, three loyalty, like can keep herself safe and go to four yeah not bad not bad in like a token stack or really you know plus one plus one counter deck if you really mm -hmm. want to stuff yeah. like that so yeah definitely cool and doubling seasonable oh you're yeah not, you're not right there but in two turns with a doubling season oh here's another one of those cards that uh probably will never be reprinted you know won't be printed for a long time at least yeah and it is an absolute house it yeah. like even with the restriction of the star mana this card has run rampant in the format just because it's so efficient. I, I love this mechanic Yeah. until something like that is happening to me, yeah. where it's just like, i got to get this off the board, and yeah. it just goes away. And it's a little bit more fair, because like you said, it's got that restriction on it, yeah. but my god. This I mean, I, I prefer this to Deadeye Navigator a million times. Yeah. I mean, Deadeye Navigator, to me, is like the broken version of this. This yeah. is like the fixed version. Yeah. yeah, it's still very abusable, but mm -hmm. that tiny restriction stops it from being an absolute menace Unless you're building the right deck, where yeah. you've gone infinite with Kel of this Mana. Yeah. That's pretty much the only way you could do it. Like, but, I mean, I've seen people do, like, uh, you know, for example, just a token maker that comes into play and gives you two white, or two tokens, and then you just sacrifice it to Ashnaut's altar, and then you just keep... Just get two. Yeah, two and then you make one. infinite Kel of Mana, and you can do whatever the heck you want, but, yeah. I mean... Yeah, that's going to happen either way. So. Even in the, the the play space of somebody not having infinite mana, this card is just oppressive. Well, it's super good. And then the fact that you can target this without it being able to blink out is a huge yeah. factor on this, yep. whereas Dead Eye Navigator is just like, oh, you're going to try and hit it? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Super good. I don't know how, how expensive it is, but I can see this being like a good protection slash denial card. Yep. Like, man. Oh, so good. Yeah. This is kind of one of our funsy choices, I'd say, right? <laughs> yeah, because it's not expensive at all. Mm -hmm. I, you know, for a little while I was like, this card's going to be ridiculously expensive, and then it got reprinted and reprinted and reprinted. I think they wanted to avoid that whole, like, this card's going to be $10 right away thing, yeah. which totally makes sense. It's an EDH card through and through, mm -hmm. and it's always going to be good in the format. It's just like, you know, well, it's not just like, but it's 
in some ways a better version of Ferrari's Wake, in other ways not so much, but yeah, I, I'll pay two extra mana to let it draw me some cards whenever yeah. I cast a creature, I mean really. I think that's a big thing, I have a mono green on that deck, and I love something that says add an extra when you tap mana, yeah. and then when it says, oh my gosh, I just played a creature, like <laughs> draw a card, the, yeah, this one's really good. Yeah. Um, I don't have a copy, I think I do have a full copy stash, but like that's one... Uh, I don't think it was. I mean, there's the stamped uh, the promo promos. Yeah, like pre-release thing. If if you can get one, like you said, I, I doubt this card's more than two bucks non foil. I have two foils so far, and like I collect them whenever I see yeah. them. I've got one stamped, and then I've got one Japanese. Unpacked. I think it was. Okay. Yeah. So. But I mean, yeah. If, if you have if you see one at your shop and it's ten bucks, like I bet this card will be twenty dollars in two or three years. Yeah. Like, if you get a foil, that's well, what I'm saying. Unless they keep printing it, which yeah. is totally possible. They may just be like, ah, oh, we don't want this anymore, yeah. so let's uh, just give all these EDH players all these crazy cards. Yeah, definitely a good one. Kind of the the crazy pickups. Oh, yeah. Um, we got Wandering Fumeral. We were going to kind of talk about these as a collective, yes. so any of the man lands, you know, we didn't want to bring up five slides for all of these. Mm -hmm. We figured this one's probably the most, like... Um, like val not valuable but yeah, playable either, one this one or the black white one both of them are pretty big as far as like play and other formats you know any any land that's going to fix you is great mm -hmm. and man, tap lands and edh really are not that bad <laughs> no like yeah they can hamper you but for the most time or most part they're great so and you think of how often somebody might say like i'm going to swing with just enough to kill you and they don't see your man oh yeah like <laughs> activate do whatever and then, like like we talked a little bit before we started recording, there might be a little bit of other play for these. Like, I think a Celestial Colonnade. That's yeah. not necessarily an EDH card. It's a modern card, but yeah. it's still twenty bucks. Like, so if you can get a hold of this, and like we always talk about, it's finishing a cycle. Thank goodness. Yes. Um, I really like the black green one personally. Like the, uh, that card always sneaks up on people. What is that one? Uh, I can't remember the name. Right, the name of it all, but I. It, it to me always sneaks up on people because it's got death touch. Oh, so yeah. it just you know you swing into it and it's like. Ah. <laughs> so man lands, pick them up. Yeah. Oh. So into uh, shadows here. And we're leading off with probably the best card that, in my opinion, that yeah. was printed there, and that's seasons past. This card is absolutely ridiculous. You're the kind of builder that can go for this. Oh yeah. I, like I can see that. I mean, I you see it in standard when people were doing. I think Seth had one. Yep. But yeah, you're pulling back any number of cards with different CMCs like. There's so much value in just casting this. It's not even funny. Like yeah. you, especially in a format where a you can either cycle a whole bunch of stuff into your graveyard, you know, just pitch it through dredge, whatever, you know. B just having it late game will basically you top deck this in your late game, and this is the only card in your hand. You are gonna be happy. In business, yeah. yeah. So, you think of just getting hit by a board wipe when you got yeah. you get unhinged completely, and you say, all right, well. You know, I'll spend six and get maybe three or four guys back, and it's just like, okay, that felt I mean, good. I've gone all the way up to eight cards and yeah. like had to discard cards before. So yeah. I mean, like, there are definite you know times where this card will just get you an entire hand back, and you just won't care. And it's all <laughs> gas too. It's not yeah. like you you've say drawn cards or something, and yeah. half of them are lands. It's these are the exact things of those CMCs that I want to keep going yep. in the game with. And I love that it puts itself back into your library too. Yeah, like. Yeah, it sucks that you can't get it back from your graveyard, but they obviously did that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm really happy it doesn't exile itself, because that's just even worse. So yeah. the fact that eventually it'll maybe come up again if you're really cycling through your library, yeah. Yeah, super good. The Hydra. Yeah, another really Hydra. good card. Yep, and the, I think the, the reason here, uh, you know, power and toughness, not bad, and it's, it's land, so it's not necessarily like a this, Dungrove or anything. This became, you know, the rune staple. Yeah. You know, as soon as it, it would probably, people realize what it did. You know, you go find whatever land you want. I usually go and grab like Maze of It or something yeah. with this. And that's the key. It's not anywhere near the top part. It's the bottom. Well, or the fact that it says a land. That and the part that it has reach and then its power and toughness is equal to the amount of lands you control. Like it is one of the best chump, well, not even to chump, just best blockers they probably printed in a long time. Yeah. Because it's doing essentially everything you want it to do. And if you think about it, it costs six, so if you probably have six lands. Now you have seven. So now it's a seven, seven with reach that can block probably anything that's going to essentially like kill you. Yeah, so, that's true. So, I mean, this is probably one of my favorite cards to see against, like, Prosh decks, you know, any kind of deck that's going to swing over with a flyer and get you, mm -hmm. you know. So, really, yeah. really good. And card. like you said, it, like that uh, blink potential. Yep. Yeah. 
this is maybe one of those cards that is a definite you need to pick this up because I think in a couple years it will be expensive because it'll be harder to find. It's, you know, something that I would not mind having like four or five copies just lying around. Just for all your green decks and yeah. just kind of sit on. Yep. You know, I think it's not a primeval titan, but it's got a little hint of it. <laughs> you know, like get, getting the land of your choice is yeah. like super, super good. Oh man, they just broke the mold when they did prime time. So yeah, Cryptothrite. This is another one of those crazy cards. It, you know, obviously green again. <laughs> we really like these green cards. Yeah. Um, it's a really good card that really gets utilized in the token decks, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. There are a lot, a lot of other builds that can obviously use this. Like uh, this and God for, the God Pharaoh's Throne or whatever work hand in hand together. You, know, you just tap all your guys for mana and all of a sudden you deal a whole bunch of damage. There's a lot of instances where this just benefits you. <laughs> yeah. I, and I see it as like cards that I used to play in standard, like when it was around um, uh, Prismatic Omen. Yeah. Like, not necessarily the same. It helps fix. This card says fix really well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's different, of course, because it's not on your lands, it's on your creatures, but turning everything you've got into a bird isn't so bad. No. Like, um, I think it has some chances to be abused, which could make the card's price go up over time. Yeah. You never know. Like, well, I'm sure there's a ton of infinite combos with this, and like, there's gotta be. I yeah. haven't played any of them because I try and stay away from that, but yeah, such a good card. So yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. Carlos Tracker. God, another just awesome ridiculous green card yeah this is probably one of my favorites from the entire block as well it is so good mm -hmm. and people really undervalue it in a lot of a lot of ways because it i mean i don't know it's just maybe not punchy enough for them but for me that slow advantage is worth it yeah you think of it like just it says landfall essentially and yeah. then you know i think people underestimate clues yep um It'll be interesting to see, since we're starting Ixalan, I wonder if people underestimate gold again. Like, I don't think they'll make that mistake again. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this card was always in our case, I think, at the shop while we had it. Yep. Like, it, it's just super good. I think good. it shot up to, like, $8 at some yeah. point, or maybe even higher. Less than 10, yeah. Like, it, it definitely makes sense. It's yeah. an amazing card. And once again, this is, just like the Hydra, this is one of those cards that I would pick up a couple copies of if you plan on building decks in the future, because mm -hmm. it, it works perfect. Yeah, definitely a great like standard star that could it could have a home definitely yeah. has a home nahiri yeah this is another one that's being played in a lot of formats mm -hmm. so it's it, price hasn't really gone down at all but this is the time to pick it up still even just because it will only go up from here in my opinion mm -hmm. it's that good of a card it does pretty much everything you want it to do i mean it loots it destroys you know threats yeah it's minus eight i've never really done before but if I ever get there, it'll be ridiculous. Yeah, so definitely good. You just go grab your biggest, meanest, whatever, and put it on the battlefield, and then it goes to your hand at the at the next end step instead of like destroyed Destroy or anything or like that. Yeah. So it's just like, um, <laughs> okay, here's a uh, Emrakul. <laughs> okay, pretty, pretty flavorful too. Yeah, like it shows up and then yeah. you know blows everything up and then comes out again. Yeah. Later, you know, such a good card. Yeah. And you know, red white doesn't really get that good of anything so yeah. <laughs> when they give us like or give them i shouldn't say us i'm not really included in that whole thing i guess you more are um but anyway anything that red white gets it's just great so yeah you think of like a, a johnny vengeon i'd say was probably the best planeswalker in those colors like yeah well i think this is the only two right yeah I th like yeah, i guess there isn't one no i think these are the two and they're both good so yeah at least they have that going for them. At least, I, I, I would you, who would you put on top then? Nahiri. Yeah, and like. that's what that, I guess that's where I was going. Like, if you put those two next to each other, Johnny Vengeance was really good. Well, and he's great he, in situations. Like yeah. there obviously are situations where the Johnny is better, but yeah. Nahiri is just that she, good. She good, and that's a good thing. If they make planeswalkers that are better than what we had, yeah, that's an. Oftentimes, that's not the way that goes. No. So. You think of. Oh, hey, here's Koth, and then it's like, oh, bad, 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 bad. It's a red player. That, oh, here's Tidvault. Woo! Yeah, the, the, the peak, he costs two. He's really good. Uh, boy. Uh, the Gitrog Frog. Yep. Uh, See, was, this is definitely your wheelhouse. I know he's good. Yeah. I don't think he was too inexpensive throughout Standard. But... No. I mean, he's a definite EDH card. Yeah, big I mean, time. I think he's actually been playing in other formats as well at some point. He may even still be trying to be brewed around at this point. Mm -hmm. The ability is just so different and yeah. so interesting. It's it's definitely not landfall. It's no. uh, the opposite of landfall. Yeah. <laughs> but, 
But it, I mean, card advantage to me is key um, in any deck, and a commander that can provide you card advantage, even at, if it comes at such a you know high cost or seemingly high cost, I think this really is you don't care. Be like, yeah. This card sucks, and it's like, I don't know. You, you might want to like it will beat you, so oh, yeah. just pay attention. I mean, like, instantly, yeah. people were building decks around this guy, yeah. and instantly we were getting our butts kicked by it. So I mean, do you think there will be any any backlash to this card, or do you think that risk is gone unless something else gets printed? Um, I mean, I could see it, but probably I, not. I yeah, like I kind of felt that way because he did make some waves early on. Like cards were, I forget the the one card that everybody was after. Uh, but it, it like you know went up two or three times in price, and yeah. and then it's just like, well, I don't know if you're if you're buying this one card that's now shot up because of this one card. If one of those goes like, well, I mean, if you think about things that are really good in this deck, like Oracle and Moldia, like yeah. that card is already ridiculous. Yeah. I mean. The bucks. things to break this card are already in existence. Yeah. There's not really a, you know, demand for like other combo pieces for yeah. this thing. There definitely are some combos that I have played against that are just like backbreaking. You're just yeah. like, how did you assemble that on turn two? And like, that's the thing. Like, I think most people see this and they're just like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like you're looking at the other side of the coin when you play this. Oh and yeah. Build it, and it's it's sneaky. Yeah, it really is. It's a it's a thinking card in yeah. my opinion, yeah. and it really shows. Mm -hmm. So, Ugh, so cool. Yeah, definitely a horror, I'd say. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Eric and me were kind of on the fence about including these, but honestly, it came down to dual lands are always good. Yeah, these are great for dual color decks. Like I wouldn't really maybe include them any higher than dual color decks, but I mean you could push it. But mm -hmm. really, definitely not four color or five color accessible. But maybe even three. But still, dual lands are good, and these have a. Ability that grants them maybe to come into play untapped, so yeah. that's always great. And you, you think of how often you say, like I think of it in um, the Theros. I kind of came back, not to standard, but to collecting and deck building in, in Theros. And I said, am I ever going to need these temples? Like, scrying's good, <laughs> but, you know, like, in the end, I'm glad that I've got at least one of those each to, yeah. like, build with. And I think, like, some people weren't huge fans of the Shadows Lands, but... They're, they're duels. That was Steve's yeah. Steve's argument, and it's totally true. Like, even if these are two bucks, two to four bucks in their lifetime in standard, just pick them up. Yeah, like, who cares? I mean, they're they're probably like a dollar at this point. I mean, yeah, you'll you'll someday get a commander, an ally color commander that you want to build, oh, yeah. and having one extra duel can't hurt. Like, that's one less island and or basic planes that you're running because of budget. Essentially, yeah. if you think about it that yeah. way, like if you pick up like you know whatever you well obviously whatever you think you're going to build, maybe like a few extras. It'll pay off in the end, yeah, really well. I think so. So, and then we've got the Westvale Abbey. Mm -hmm. uh, did we get both sides of this card? Nope. Oops. Anyway, we all know what this thing turns into. It's a giant nine-seven monster that has flying and life link and vigilance. I think, or something like that. I think that. so. Lots Maybe of keywords. Maybe not vigilance, but Real it's bad. got a lot of keywords. Yeah. Um, it's probably my high pick for any land from this block, as far as like may become valuable at some point. Just because it's it's very unique in what it does. Being able to flip over into that giant demon that's going to essentially wreck somebody. Or just save your butt. I mean, I've had this thing save my life so many times. I include it in a lot of black decks and or black green decks. Because, you know, usually those decks don't have, you know, well, for the most part, the way I build them don't have a whole lot of flying defense. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, if you can kind of sneakily turn this into a flying defender and they're going for the kill, that's perfect. Yeah. So, Yeah. Plus, yeah, I wish, I wish there was a rule that let you play this as your commander as well. That'd be pretty sweet. I don't know why this isn't a legendary land, but yeah. I wish that there was a rule that let you do that because it would be so fun to just have a land as your commander. And it kind of fits like clerics aren't a huge tribe, but they're pretty. I mean, we were. I even joked they might make a cleric thing yeah. in the commander seventeen. I mean, because... that's what we thought as soon as we saw that artwork. Because yeah. to me, it doesn't look like a wizard even still. No. So for a long time, clerics were huge. Like if yeah. you look in old blocks, and there's clerics of every color, and black and white had its big, almost like a feud going. It seems yeah. like, and then this it kind of fits there. Yeah. Like, man. And I love that they included another demon to take Grizzlebrand's place on this yeah. block or plane. That's what I'm trying to say. This plane, <laughs> and you know, if we ever go back to Innistrad which we probably will, and, you know, I don't know what I'll be at that point. <laughs> you know, maybe this will be the big enemy at that point, you know, Ormondal, the guy that's going to wreck your face. Yeah. 
Get out of here, Aldrazi. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> and, and lastly, I think there's a little bit of draw as far as you think of the Elbrus, the Binding Blade. Yeah. People like that card just because, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's so it's so unique and tricky, yeah. just like this one. Yeah. I mean, That's this one to me is way more playable, but yes. yeah. One more thing pulling for the card, I think, as far as yeah. to maybe make it valuable in the future. Yeah. Uh, On to Eldritch Moon, we have Selfless Spirit. Pretty good standard card. Another one yeah. that was kind of sold out for the most part in standard. It's just it's just good. Get creatures getting indestructible in a turn, similar to the Dauntless Escort. You know, cost two. It's flying. Well, like, uh, and it's another card that I could see being played in other formats yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Just because it's it's that good of an effect that at that low of a cost that yeah. I think it's worth it. You know, two one flyers are always good too. So it's good, definitely good. We put Lily on <laughs> on here because uh, yeah, if you if you see a thirty eight dollar card go down like. I remember when this card was 60 bucks, we could not get one for like two months. That's how much people wanted to have this card in their decks. Like, I mean, it was insane for how, how much Eldritch Moon was enjoyed and opened and drafted at our yeah. store and not having a, a single, I think we opened like two and then we didn't see another one for months. Like, It's odd. My love for this card does not exist, basically. I yeah. do not like this card at all. I mean, I know there are a ton of people that really, really like it, but for me in primary command or primary the commander play i just uh, and i could see that you know you've got a little bit of the um like uh, delirium was a mechanic for that minus two you know anytime you've got a uh, ultimate of double plus x like it's probably not going to happen so especially yeah. you know it's not even double doubling season of all no there's uh, there's just so many other better lilianas in my opinion yeah. not saying this card is bad i think it's not in the in the commander format. That's where I don't like it. One v one, I think it's great. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, somewhat similar to, as far as the cost of the. She or does she cost four, Liliana? The, yes, the she does. Gray. And I, you know, that's where I kind of draw the line here too, because I'm not even playing Liliana the Veil in multi multiplayer commander. Yeah. So why would I play this one? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I like agree. she's a little a little quirky. Um, like it, I, the five cost one that came in Nomicat is like, or is it four cost? I can't remember. Is way better in my opinion for our format than this mm -hmm. card is. So, I think that while well, this one that we spoke about price memory, I think this one will come down. Maybe not a week after rotation, but um, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see it finding homes in you know other formats, other formats as well. Sure. It's definitely a useful card. Like I said, it's I I wrestled with even including this, but. I knew somebody out there was going to be like, where's Lily out of the last hope? So here it is. I, I think the fact that it could go down is the reason I wanted to put yeah. it on here. Because if, if you, even if you're just a collector or, you know, something else changes with the Planeswalker rules or whatever, like, man, to not have this card and then watch it go up again, that would suck. Well, there are people so. that exclusively collect certain Planeswalkers. Like, I know a ton of people that are nuts Lily about Lily. Yeah. It's just like, okay, true. settle yeah. down, buddy. Yeah, she's, she's good, but maybe, I, I do agree. You think of Liliana Vest, like, that feels like a black planeswalker yeah. to me. This card is just a little jumbled, a little. Yeah. But try and get it, because it was like 38 bucks, like. Who knows what it is now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Good old Emrakul. This card's like $7 right now, so, I mean, <laughs> pick it up. It yeah. is a great finisher. Yeah. It's, a, I mean, it doesn't have the, the diamond restriction, which maybe mm -hmm. it should have. <laughs> yeah. There, there should have been at least one yeah. or two diamonds, I think. Especially with that first line. Oh, yeah. just make it more and more cheap, depending yeah. on the card types. Like, um, Yeah. This card. Ugh, it's a house. Yep. I mean, there are commander decks built around this card solely. I mean, it definitely makes sense. I love including it in anything that wants to go really big. Obviously, the benefit is to cast it, so you don't really want to include it in, like, uh, Myel or anything like that, but... You know, there are decks like, uh, what's the Rasputin guy? Um, not Rasputin. Uh, I can't remember his name now. What do you do? He taps, or he comes in with counters, and then you can remove them to make colorless mana. Uh, maybe it is Rasputin. Anyway, we're getting on another tangent. There are cards that definitely love this card. You know, or cards, commanders that love this card, and I think it's a great include as a finisher anywhere, basically. So It's, it's super, like you said, it's kind of... And again, to use that term, it's it fits like the the battleship magic. Oh like, yeah, the battle cruiser. Yeah, this yeah. is a definite battle cruiser. <laughs> yeah. And you know, if if you didn't tune into standard or you don't like, if this card was top, so, like a two part combo in standard, got banned. Like yep. 
That's the only reason it's seven dollars right yeah. now. That's how good this card was. It was people were complaining. They're like, "Why do you make the the card of the set?" Just <laughs> Emmer cools all over every promotional item for Eldritch Moon. You know, you think of Sahili. She was the card of Kaladesh, and they banned a one card combo for her or the two card combo. Like, why do you make a card that's so good that you're just you have to axe? Well, a lot of that was because of the environment. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously the uh, Marvel yep. side of this really kind of pushed it over the edge. Yeah. I think maybe axing one of those instead of both of them might have been the right way to go about that. But well, they were separate, weren't they? It was Emrakul first, and then it was yes. the uh, Aetherworks Marvel. Yeah, and I don't think Emrakul was played. I mean, it might have been played a little bit, but not anywhere near as much as it was when they figured out that oh yeah this is a great marvel target there, there was a delirium deck i think that yeah. ran it but yeah like th there's a reason this card got banned yep oh god yeah <laughs> it's just good and you know i i i remember thinking back okay again we i always i love it they they take an effect that you think wouldn't be balanced oh yeah and it really isn't but like they kind of they got me on the hook for a minute they say okay you you get a turn of your opponents and then they get a turn back and it's like that's that doesn't seem so great and then you watch what you can do with your opponent's turn and it's just like oh oh huh. <laughs> use literally every every arrow in their quiver against themselves yep. and uh yeah they can have a turn to recover and well it's, and there are so many times where i've just used all my opponent's resources to kill one of my other opponents yeah. and it's just like well, i didn't do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was this guy enjoy the swing back right? yeah. yeah so oh, pick it up Ugh, so and you know it's a titan there's a yeah. little bit of collector value there too like yeah. uh boy tamio this is another card that to me is just i don't know so good yeah uh, the three costs uh, three color costs kind of you know takes it back a bit it's not as good as the other tamio because mm -hmm. of that but i think we were spoiled with the first tamio yeah, big really time that card is so good but i mean if you're playing bant plus this is a great card. Yeah. It really it is. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's a pickup for Atraxa. It goes in Atraxa like a glove. I mean, yeah. it just fits it. Like, you essentially plus one, choose Atraxa, and then choose one of your opponent's creatures that's going to swing into your Planeswalkers. And you're just like, yeah, I'll just draw a card here and draw a card there. Atraxa's not red, right? No. Atraxa's everything but red. Yeah, or that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just like, wait a minute, Kent. You're good. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like, I love that line of play, you know, especially because even when you block with the tracks, so you're still drawing a card. So, like, until your next turn, those creatures, whenever they deal damage, you're essentially drawing a card. So, yeah, yeah that's a great ability. The minus two is awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, it does essentially what old Tamio d did, except for twice. Maybe not as good, but still pretty good. Yeah. And then the minus seven is obviously what you're looking for, you know. This is doubling seasonable, and yep. I think they did that for a reason because yeah. <laughs> it goes right into that deck. And it kind of it kind of fits with the the tricolor, like yeah, that, it's fair. That is fair. Like if you saw like a three cost planeswalker that could yeah. in green, like that's a little different. But here yeah. you've got Bant. Like there's that chance at least. Like uh, this card could have easily been blue green in my opinion, but I love I kind of like that they included white to kind of slow it down a little bit. Yeah. That wasn't a bad idea at all. And I think you know. Chris brought up this point a long time ago. Like, I don't think doubling season, of course, screams planeswalkers. Like, mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I don't think they care. Like, to EDH, why would they? You know? No, I mean, it's an old card that mm -hmm. I mean, really, at this point, not a whole lot of people have anyway. You know, it's like 70 bucks at, the, yeah. at this moment. Like, but I mean, I don't think Wizards is like wringing their hands in their office saying, Can we, can we put Tamio at four? I mean, like, it's, it's Commander, they just, yeah, I mean. They're going to let the Wild West be the Wild West yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And really, there are modern doubling season command or Planeswalker decks, and they're actually pretty cool, but they're mm -hmm. definitely not competitive. No. So, I mean, there's that. Yeah. Oh, so good. She's yeah. super good. I think that might be the last. Oh, no. We got Gisin Girl. I think this may be our last one. This, to me, is like the quintessential like zombie commander that came out of the entire thing. Like I love this way more than uh, what's-his-face from the first one, the Tap Zombie. I can't remember his name. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Grimgrin. Yes, Grimgrin. Like, that card definitely had a lot of flavor and was interesting, whereas mm -hmm. this card is just really, really, really good. And it's very underwhelmingly, you know, good as far as, 
you know, what I look for in a commander. I'm trying to say words that I can't even think of right now. Um, <laughs> but I love those fly under the radar commanders. You know, a lot of people don't even realize that this card can cast a zombie from your graveyard. Like, once a turn, yeah, but usually that's all you need. Like, I've cast so many Garys off of this card that it's yeah. not even funny. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, okay, I'm going to cast my Gary from my yard, and you're just like, oh, no, because they just countered it. Yeah, because they'd just be like, oh, my God, like... That that'll that'll make them remember that yeah, you can really. cast from a graveyard. Like <laughs> you gotta start slow, so they're just like, yeah, it didn't seem so great. And then they're at like nine, and then you hit diagraph them. captains. Like yeah. there are just so many good zombies. Like this is a great zombie tribal commander, mm -hmm. even though it's not a zombie. Which I don't know. I think it's kind of. I think it's awesome, and you yeah, because uh, both Gissa and Geralt made their appearance yep. in Commander. 15? I think that the was. The monocolored. And those cards are amazing, too. Yeah. So, I mean, you just throw them in the deck. I mean, really. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's so cool. The, like, Innistrad is just... It is just, like, awesome story flavor soup. And then they come out with a, a two-character commander. Like, think yeah. of any other commander pair that's, like... I, you, I don't even well, care. Well, and Tarot. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good it. win. But, you know, yeah. You think of, like... Oh, and then there's the red-white one. Um, uh, NX and Siamese. Yeah, or, or something like that. Yeah. I mean, there's not very many that no. you know are, have double creatures. Well, well, there's Mina and Dan. But uh, that's the one that immediately came to my mind. Yeah. It's just like, who are these these elves? <laughs> <Yeah. like? laughs> Where did they come from? <laughs> you see a character from Commander come into, and I know Geralt, like Geralt's messenger, Geralt's yeah. mind crusher. He's like, got a lot. He's of he's around, like. But then you see a card with him, and yeah. now her, and now they're together, and it's just like, oh my gosh, like. I really hope they survive this whole Emmer apocalypse because. Yeah. You know, if we do go back to Innistrad, which we most likely will, you they'll know. just have some extra tentacles. Steve. Yeah. Oh god, I hope not. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired of things growing tentacles. They'll that just shouldn't. have a colorless, colorless mana like, symbol in their cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am so tired of like the the whole Eldrazi. like yeah. I mean, I love Eldrazi. Don't get me wrong. I it's probably one of my favorite tribes, but I'm so tired of it on this block. Yeah. If it would have been somewhere else, I would have. You know, they could have ruined anything else but my but, baby. But, but in Australia. Yeah, this is where I started, you know? Like, uh, I was, I had so much, like, nostalgia, and then all of a sudden it's just like, wait, why does that werewolf have a tentacle growing? Oh, no. It's, it's oh, no. Really and I think that's probably why they chose in because they said, most beloved set, most hated, cool baddies, like, smash them together. And there's a little yeah. bit of the horror thing. Yeah, I get the Eldritch horror thing, yeah. but really... I'm with you. Being, being a shopkeep for those like four sets, I think a lot of people were just like, okay, yeah. here it comes again. <laughs> I'm so tired of these guys, <laughs> yeah. even though I love them, but yeah. my god, can we just move on to like, I don't know, anything? Can Some, we get oozes or something? The happy and uh, like wonderful plane that isn't yeah. mutated. I just want to see unicorns and I want to do like the Diablo thing where there's just oh, unicorns yeah. and werebears and yeah. stuff chasing something you. Different. Maybe the, candy canes. the dinosaurs. And then the nice, they brighten things up with Kaladesh. I'd say. They really did. I mean, like, Kaladesh turned everything around, and I think it drew a lot of people back to magic, and then, of course, they did Omin Cat, and that drew a lot of people away from magic, and yeah, I think so. now they're doing Ixlan, which is amazing. Yeah. I, you know, I was joking about this the other day with Lauren. We were talking about how, essentially, like, this, <laughs> this Ixlan set is, like, perfect for Halloween. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're going to dress up as most of these guys anyway, so yeah. it's just perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a little, we kind of meandered there. You could yeah. add, like, uh, standard analysis, I guess. Yeah, I mean. But that's okay. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I think uh, these, are, that's a pretty good list. I'm yeah, happy with I would, that. I would say so. I mean, once again, like, uh, really the idea behind this, and a lot of people have actually been doing this. I've been seeing them all over YouTube, and I just wanted to throw my two cents in, essentially, is that these are the cards that you will probably regret not picking up now. You know, later on, you know, two years from now, when you're just like, gosh, I need to get in Geralt to run my zombie commander deck, and it's just like, where's this card? Yeah, or <laughs> even though I doubt it with that one, might but, be you know. in stock, and instead of two bucks, it's eight bucks. Yeah, like. exactly. Yeah. You know, I had this bite me really hard when I first came into the format, just because I didn't play. Like I said, I came in on Innistrad, so I didn't play a lot of those other older, you know, formats, and I had to start buying some of those commanders. And back then, you know, there. They're not printed the same way as they are now, which probably will help us really in the long run for most of these cards, yeah. you know, print runs. But yeah, I mean, definitely sometimes like finding your parallel lives, finding your blah, 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 you know. Chromatic lanterns. Yes. Like, you know, 
cards even that recent. I mean, RTR was right after Innistrad. And just because something's not like high value doesn't mean it's not hard to find. Like, yeah. think about rampant growth. Like, you guys go through rampant growth, like, yeah. And most of it's me, so that's yeah. the hard part. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's true. Like, you think of you think of two to four dollar cards. Like, for long point or a long time, you might be out of lightning griefs. It's a five dollar oh, yeah. card. I know that's been re reprinted a bunch but oh, thank god imagine if they like didn't 12, exactly like yeah. it would be just as hard to find luckily you got a good stack like you think of soul ring would commander wouldn't exist if we didn't have soul rings in every pre-constructed product like for for somebody getting into it because uh, that would be just ridiculous like yeah. Minecraft, you know that would be horrible like yeah. thank goodness you know and i think you're right print runs are it's like two different beasts before like a certain point it's just like i, I wonder if there's numbers somewhere well and i and you know Part of me is a little bit like maybe I'm being a little too wary just because of that. Like maybe I'm used to the old ways and now we're going into the new ways and it's just like, wait, these cards aren't going to be hard to find ever. And it's just like, I don't know if that's a design, you know, purposely by Wizards, which obviously it would, would be if they were shooting for that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we, we talked about it with Zendikar Resurgent. Like that was a good example of this. Like the reason that card is like, 50 cents essentially <laughs> like it's not 50 cents but you know what i mean it feels like a bulk yeah yeah it's because it's been printed like a million times it is a amazing card for commander and like anybody should have it in any green deck and the fact that i'm, I'm not going to go back into zendikar resurgent but <laughs> yeah i think you know you bring up a good point there i think it is purposeful yeah i think that maybe the age of speculation is kind of gone for standard stuff unless it's a mythic that's a popular b played in other formats and maybe c like good in commander or something like but maybe, maybe we should cover this in another episode like yeah, go, so. go more depth or in depth on it and talk about like buyouts and blah 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 stuff like that because i know a lot of people are really interested in that so yeah maybe i used to do it a lot not buy out but like follow that stuff yeah. like and i mean i think you're right i think these are like some of these are fun wins or yeah. fun picks but there are a lot that could should maybe have that happen to them but they might not anymore because yeah. of the prints so yeah we'll see well, well, anyway what do you think, think Steve? Uh, I think we've uh, definitely talked about yeah, it. We've talked so. about it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. We will uh, see you guys next time. Yeah, for sure.